Today we're looking at the Thermalright AXP90 X53, a popular low profile CPU air cooler suitable for many ITX builds. The best part of all, it's super affordable. Here we have the black model. It comes with a short instructional guide, some black foam padding, Intel 1700 backplate, and the actual X53 low profile cooler, and a box with the mounting hardware. A pretty underwhelming and straightforward unboxing. The cooler comes with a 92mm static pressure black fan to match the aesthetic. This is the black model made of copper and aluminum, and I think it looks pretty cool. Today I'll be installing the cooler using the AM5 method, which uses the original backplate. Start by removing the sticker and adding a fingerprint. Next, remove the pre-installed LJ1700 mounting bracket. Be sure to hold on to the screws, as we can reuse these later. It's much easier to install the screws first, then the AM5 bracket from underneath. Rinse and repeat. Next, we can install the double-sided mounting screws. These are hand-tightened only. We will be using the highly acclaimed FormD T1 in this video. We're going to start by removing the AIO. This includes the top radiator and fan. If you're also using the T1, it's a good idea to remove the side strut as it gives you better access to the motherboard. Oh, Dusty 4080 Super, nothing to see here. Now it's time to remove the AIO. If you drop the bolts, just play it off and recover them later, the Zero Dark 30 extraction style. It's always a good idea to remove the existing thermal paste. However, this thermal paste wasn't all for long. I just used alcohol and a cotton swab, and it's mostly gone. Now, I'm removing the motherboard to give me access to the backplate. If you're not using a tremendous amount of force removing your 24 pin connector, are you really even trying? Remove the existing standoff screws. Be sure to add a very thick and unnecessary amount of thermal paste. Now, seat the cooler, hand tighten the four included nuts, use the included nut fastener and X pattern for equal pressure. Now you can attach the fan. Reassemble everything and you're good to go. Voila, here's your build complete. I think it looks pretty cool. In the first test, we have the Atmos and the X53 running at 50% fan speed. In this test, the CPU has a PBO thermal throttle limit of 92 degrees Celsius. In the test, the X53 is noticeably louder. There is virtually no space between the side panel and air cooler, causing a slight high pitch hum. The biggest difference is the Cinebench R23 multi-core score with almost a 3,000 point difference. The next test is basically the same results. The X53 is much louder than the AIO at 100% fan speed. The Cinebench score is also the same with 3,000 point difference. 
overall, I recommend the X53, but only on a lower power chip like the 7800X 3D. Those chips have a lower TDP than something like the 7900X or 7950X. The description on Amazon did mention that this cooler has a TDP limit of 150, slightly lower than the 170 TDP of the 7900X. If you're building in the T1 and you're using a 3 slot card or larger, I suggest you also look at the X47. It's 47mm instead of 53mm and will give you some space between the cooler and side panel to reduce the vibration hum. This concludes my review of the Thermorite APX90 X53. If you like what you've seen here, please like and subscribe.